Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, re-recording because it's easier than editing. <laughs> so I got my breakfast tacos, very, very happy I woke up in time. The problem is that one breakfast taco is not enough. Two is too much. Uh, so I always have this thing, it's like, I'm gonna get breakfast tacos and I'm gonna go here, go to the gym, go here. No, no, it's always just like, I'm going home. <laughs> what does Long Beach Griffey say? I'm going home. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so I did a video yesterday uh, where uh, I showed this publicity photo. It was uh, apparently for some Women of Marvel podcast, but it has Vidayala, who has no gender and is also trans, which I don't understand at all. But I'm not supposed to call Vida a woman, but Marvel can call Vida a woman. So anyway, it was this promotional photo, and everyone just picked up on being bothered in multiple different ways. Uh, they express themselves uh, very clearly. And the funny thing is that some very, very calm, rational, mature people were just like, what the hell? Uh, my favorite one is it's somebody said, it's a collection of every uh, woman who used to make fun of me for reading comics in high school. And now they're writing for Marvel. Uh, it felt very fake. Not just in the, uh, hey, we're all friends, but also, like, uh, everyone's kind of playing a persona. Like, it literally looks like a promotional photo for a sitcom from the 80s or 90s. And people were throwing out humorous uh, titles like Z's the Boss, XZ, and uh, Married with No Children. I thought those were uh, particularly funny. There was a couple other really good ones. Um, but everyone just kind of pointed out how, like, how did we get here? How did we get here? So a couple days ago, I saw this promotional photo. It's from the 1994 Batman Summit. A summit is uh, where the uh, editors, the writers, and sometimes artists, like I saw Jim Balant here uh, and Graham Nolan. I don't remember them writing or co-writing, but I've heard about summits that are only editors and writers, uh, but then Sometimes they also have uh, artists. So you're going to plan, you know, the event for the year, the, the stories for the year. You're going to coordinate if all of a sudden, you know, Silver St. Cloud is going to be the love interest for Bruce Wayne. You want to, you know, make sure that someone else isn't like, oh, I have Vicky Vale. It's like, well, you know, we got to we got to decide who the love interest is going to be. Uh, this year and you, you know, oh, we're gonna do the reveal of Bane. We're gonna do this. So uh, it's a kind of a conclave They'll usually you know go rent a, a Rooms at a hotel and the conference room and stuff like that So I saw this photo and the first thing I said is oh boy You can't do that now because it's a bunch of white guys. So that's quote no diversity and then I started thinking <laughs> about the promotional video and I was like What's the difference? between the Women of Marvel promotional video and the Batman Summit from 1994. Because on one level, you say, well, you know, the Women of Marvel, it has so much diversity. I mean, you have all sorts of different types of uh, lesbians. It's like, no, you went from all white guys to basically all lesbians. And both of those are, you know, no diversity. But actually, there's much more diversity in the 1994 Batman Writers Summit. Yes, they are all white, but I, where did where did people just start saying like, oh, if you're white, like you're the same as every other white person? So like Vladimir Putin, Sylvester Stallone, and Ethan Van Skyver, oh, it's just the same person. It's just the same person three times. There's no diversity. These are very, very, very different people. Yes, they're all technically white, but that doesn't make them remotely similar. In fact, I couldn't think of three more dissimilar uh, people. The idea of diversity is you want people with all sorts of different experiences, backgrounds, and you have that in the Batman Writers Summit. You got Chuck Dixon, who's like this, you know, uh, tough uh, kid, uh, blue collar kid from Philadelphia. You got Denny O'Neill, who's this very, you know, erudite uh, intellectual. Uh, he was he was in the military. He was in the navy. He was a journalist. Uh, he was a writer. He was an editor. Uh, you have uh, you have Brits there. You have all kinds of different point of views. I'm telling you, you actually back in the day, you didn't need the credits. I mean, after a while, if you read enough Chuck Dixon, you don't need his name on a story. You know it's Chuck Dixon. You know a Chuck Dixon story versus a, a Doug Mensch Munch Mensch. 
uh, from Alan Grant. Like you can tell them apart. You can tell them apart sometimes without even reading it. Just, you know, by the uh, the patterns of the narration, how much narration. Like I could flip through, I go, oh, this is a Chuck Dixon. Especially like when you get to like, you know, the Nightfall storyline, they would do that compendium where they would put all the, you know, issues in order. Like you could flip through and say, that one's Chuck Dixon, that one's, you know, Alan Grant, etc. So, you're looking and you're saying like, oh, it's a bunch of white men, so it's there's no diversity. And yet, their writing is very different. Their life experience is very different. I mean, just, I was kind of shocked how small Denny O'Neill is, especially when you put him, you know, a few feet away from uh, Chuck Dixon, who is tall, but he's not Andre the Giant. <laughs> like, I didn't realize how tiny uh, Denny O'Neill uh, is. Uh, and uh, so you're looking at these all these white men and that there is almost unlimited diversity among them. And then you go to the women of Marvel, which, okay, it's women of Marvel asterisk because you're not supposed to call one of them a woman. A woman. Um, and there's, there's diversity of melanin. There's a kind of diversity of, of sexuality because Sana Amanat is one out of the five that doesn't claim to be uh, gay or vaguely queer. Um, but the writing, th- there's, there's, there's almost nothing. If you took the credits off of Vida Ayala in a Teeny Howard story, you would not be able to tell the difference. Same with Danny Lore. Same with very many people who write under the, you know, diversity uh, banner. Uh, Leah Williams, I could uh, probably tell her stories apart. Uh, she has a, a sense of humor that, uh, well, that, that right there distinguishes it from uh, Teeny Howard and uh, Vida Ayala. But um, do you ever see these five, you know, in the Women of Marvel disagreeing on any subject? The first thing in their brain is going to say, oh, shit, I'm going to be fucking destroyed by these bitches if I don't agree with them. So they have to guess what is going to be the consensus. The most dangerous thing in this group is to be the first person to give an opinion on something. Uh, so they all either actually believe the exact same thing, write almost identically, or they're willing to pretend to uh, believe the exact same stuff. Whereas, can you really imagine like very strong, distinct personalities and talents like Chuck Dixon and uh, Denny O'Neill just agreeing on everything? Oh, we just agree on everything. You can't tell our stories apart. They're completely identical. We write the same way. We have the same point of view. We have the same tone. No, no. God, no. You did not need Denny O'Neill's name on one of his stories to be able to tell it was written by Denny O'Neill. Same with Chuck Dixon. Same with Alan Grant. Doug Munch. Uh, Munch. Munch. <laughs> However it is. Uh, they were very, very distinct. Uh, it was basically a, a legal formality to put their names on their stories because their style was their signature. It was, you know, the proof of who wrote it. Uh, and uh, so uh, my contention is there is almost infinite diversity in the uh, Batman Writer Summit, and there is essentially no diversity in the uh, women of Marvel, since it's five women, I'm sorry, four women and one non-gendered earthling, uh, that have, or will pretend to have, the exact same point of view on everything. Uh, out of the, uh, the writers there, because only three of them are writers, Two of them write exactly the same. Uh, one is pretty much the same, but has a sense of humor that can, you know, I'd, oh, that's a that's a Leia Williams story. So uh, let me know. Uh, I'm especially interested. In, can anyone look at the Batman Writer Summit and name every single person there? I, I can't. I can't. I mean, I, I know Jim Balin. I know uh, Chuck Dixon, uh, Graham Nolan, Denny O'Neill. Uh, I think I know which one is Alan Grant, but I'm not 100% positive. But um, uh, can you name all of them like, and put it in the comments so I can say who all these people uh, are? I couldn't find any um, uh, anywhere online that said who every single person uh, was. But um, uh, I'm very interested in hearing reactions for this. I mean, uh, diversity has become literally solely visual. Uh, and you can't just be gay. You need to be gay and wear a rainbow shirt and have a rainbow pin. Because if you don't do that, are you really even gay? It doesn't even count. Like, you have to be visually gay. Like, you, 
you look at the, the Batman Rider Summit, everyone kind of looks vaguely the same. Like, if you robbed a bank, if they all robbed a bank, they're like, uh, what was the description? It's like, well, there's a tiny older guy, and then just, I just, just I don't know, dark ish hair on the other 12 of them. Uh, so, yeah, like, visually, nobody there is very distinct unless they're very tall or very short. Visually, the women of Marvel, asterisk, are extremely distinct from each other. And yet, in the point of view, in the writing, in the, quote, talent, unquote, absolutely identical, which means there's no diversity. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll have more videos up all this weekend. Bye.